In this video, we're going to show you how to install the fuel pump and sending unit, as well as a fuel transfer unit in your Ford Explorer, both located inside the fuel tank. With the hood open, go ahead and locate the fuse block here on the driver's side of the vehicle. Go ahead and press into these tabs, open it up. I'm going to locate our 30 amp fuse right here. This controls the fuel pump. Use a pair of pliers, needle nose, and pluck that out. Close the cover, set the fuse on top. At this point here, hop into the vehicle. You want to go ahead and start the vehicle. It may only run for just a couple seconds before the fuel is purged out of the lines. Go ahead, put the vehicle in neutral. Using a 10 millimeter socket, let's go ahead and loosen the ground terminal on the battery. With that loose, go ahead and wiggle that terminal free, lift it up and off. And we're gonna go ahead and get underneath the vehicle now. Using a 19 millimeter socket, loosen and remove the lug nuts. Once you have the lug nuts removed, grab the wheel, remove it, and set it aside. Loosen and remove the clamp securing the exhaust to the flex pipe here. Using a 13 millimeter socket on our particular clamp. I'm just gonna go ahead and slide this forward. Now at this point here, I wanna go ahead and open up this piece of pipe here off of the other pipe that it's made it to, so we can go ahead and slide the exhaust down and off. We're just gonna use the chisel here to get underneath and open that up a little bit. Once we get this separated, we're gonna go ahead and move to the back of the vehicle and remove the mufflers from the rubber hangers. We're gonna use our pole jack. You can use your regular jack. You wanna go ahead and just support that exhaust. We're not gonna lift it much. We wanna go ahead and take the pressure off of the hangers. So lift that up just a little bit. Underneath the rear of the vehicle, you're gonna locate two mufflers, one on the passenger side, one on the driver's side. Now these are supported by some rubber hangers. There's one here, one on the other side, and then there's one in the center, which we're gonna to get to a little bit later. We're gonna use a pry bar up against the bottom here and up against the muffler tip, and go ahead and pry that off. Let's go ahead and do that on the driver's side. On the central located hanger, we're gonna use some channel locks. You can use whatever you have for a tool to go ahead and pop this off, but channel locks tend to work pretty well. Now with the slit in the middle here, I'm gonna use a small pry bar and kind of just get in there and twist that up, just like that. We have our rear hanger here, just before where the pipe splits off to a Y. Let's go ahead and work this off. Now I want to go ahead and slightly lower our jack a little bit. You're probably going to want to have some assistance because someone's going to have to support the rear portion of the exhaust while you go ahead up front and separate that from the flex pipe. Now we're just going to lower this enough where we can pull it off of the stand here, swing it off to the side, and then remove it from underneath the vehicle. Now I want to go ahead and separate the muffler pipe here or the mid pipe from the flex pipe here. And we're gonna go ahead and twist those mufflers out back and this will separate here. And just lower this down. Next, we're gonna go ahead and remove these Torx bolts here from our drive shaft to the coupler unit. Before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and take a crayon and I wanna go ahead and mark this so that this goes back in the same exact spot as it did when it came out. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark the flange. And I'm gonna come across to this. And I'm even going to carry this line up onto the dry shaft. From handling this here, the mark might rub off. And we're just using a yellow crayon or marker here to go ahead and do that. 
Now we're gonna use a T45 Torx bit. We wanna loosen and remove these. We're gonna use our impact gun, but if you don't have an impact gun and you can't loosen these here by hand, go ahead and have someone hop into the vehicle, apply the brake. That's gonna keep the drive shaft and the drive line from rotating here. Go ahead and use a pair of pliers here to go ahead and rotate this here. Now I'm going to continue to rotate this around until the crayon marks line up again. Now we'll go ahead and proceed to removing these. Now sometimes these can be stuck a little bit, so we're just gonna try and turn these by hand and pull them out. Now there's gonna be a little bridge here that holds these two. There's a total of three of these. Gonna come off, set that aside. And go ahead and just continue that process with the other ones. Just working your way around. There's a second one. Now, before you remove this one here, you wanna pay attention to make sure that the drive shaft itself isn't super loose, where when you remove this, it's gonna fall out on you. Chances are it won't because it does recess inside the coupler unit itself, but you wanna be aware of that. Now, if you have to, to make it easier, it's okay to go ahead and move this drive shaft. You can go either way with it. Go ahead and get those last two out. Now, these are unthreaded. They're just kind of stuck in there a little bit. That's why we're doing this by hand to work these out slowly. As you remove these here, I also want to pay attention. These bolts do have blue Loctite on them. Upon reassembly, be sure to reapply blue Loctite onto these bolts. And go ahead and rotate this back so that those lines line up. In the center section of our two-piece drive shaft, we have a carrier bearing here. We want to go ahead and remove this bracket. We're going to keep the carrier bolted to it. We need a 13 millimeter socket to loosen and remove the two bolts. Before we do that, we're gonna go ahead and support our drive shaft with a pole jack. You can use your regular jack. We're not gonna raise it. We just want to, that's it. We just want it to touch it. That's it. Gonna support that. Now we're gonna keep this supported here. We're gonna to move to the back of the vehicle and we're gonna separate the rear connector to the rear differential. Now on the back side here, if you follow around the coupler unit right here, you're gonna find a little notch in here and you wanna go ahead and use a tool to get inside there. And you wanna pop this out from this unit. I'm just gonna go ahead and tap around here You want to continue to do so, prying this out from the differential. You can always spray it down with some rust penetrant as well to work that out. Now at this point here, we're starting to break this free. Make sure our drive shaft and everything is lined up here with our crayon marks. All right, this is just about ready to pop down. Now at this point, we have our drive shaft supported by our jack. So we're gonna go ahead and slowly lower our jack to allow our drive shaft to drop down. 
Now what our goal here is to lower the drive shaft down enough where we can slide the drive shaft over. We're gonna move this over to the passenger side. I'm just gonna support this drive shaft out of the way. That way there we'll be able to go ahead and lower our gas tank down. Disconnect the fuel line here. Now you definitely wanna have some eye protection when doing something like this here, as well as a catch can, cause you're probably gonna have some fuel left in the line. We're going to undo this lock right here, lift that up and off. Now you're going to need this high pressure fuel line tool to go ahead and separate this. So we're going to push this down to unlock this. I'm going to use a little compressed air inside here. There seems to be a little bit of debris in here uh, causing some resistance from us separating the line here. Here we go, we have the line separated. Swing that off to the side. We can go ahead and remove our tool here. Now it would be ideal if you can cap off this line here. We have a rubber hose right here connecting to our canister. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that and gently twist and pull. Now the lower hose here has a little green locking retainer on it. You know, there's two little tabs. These press in gently, one on each side. And then once those are pushed in, we're going to push it up. And come up through the top there and go ahead and rotate this a little bit. Slide that off. Now we're going to do the same to the top one here, but the lock tabs are on the top side of it. And once those tabs are unlocked, we can push it down. All right, once you have those clips undone, I'm just using a small pick here to go ahead and grab the edges of that little retainer and go ahead and work that down. Seems like there's a little bit of debris stuck in that as well. Okay, now that we have that down, go ahead and grab that and we're gonna pull that out of the side of the canister. Okay, we have that separated. We're gonna press in on this tab here, and sometimes it's hard to get that off, so we're just gonna use our pocket screwdriver to go ahead and grab that little connector up on top there. And gently, you wanna grab this and gently wiggle that off. We're gonna use our fuel tank jack to go ahead and support the tank. Now we're not lifting this. The pads have just made contact with it. Our next step is to go ahead and loosen and remove the bolt for the fuel tank straps. Now the driver's side fuel tank strap, the rear bolt is right here and it's accessible through the wheel well area. So after you remove the wheel, we're gonna use our ratchet. It's a 13 millimeter. And we're just gonna go ahead, loosen and remove this one here. Now we have switched over to a gear wrench on this here because of the clearance between the frame and the bolt itself. The ratchet just wouldn't fit anymore. So you can get your gear wrench up and in there. bolt out. Now if we follow the strap up to the front, we have another 13 millimeter bolt here. Let's go ahead and loosen and remove that. At this point here, we're going to go ahead and repeat the same process for the passenger side. So we're stretching our 13 millimeter swivel socket up in front of the lower control arm, but behind the gas tank. We have an extension on there, and we're gonna go ahead and loosen this here. Back in a little bit there, remove this, and we'll go up top and remove the rest of it with our gear wrench.
using our six millimeter socket with extension, we're gonna go ahead and loosen the hose clamp on our filler neck. Reach up there and break that free. Now using our small pry bar, we're gonna go ahead from underneath on the edge of our fuel tank filler hose here. And we're just gently gonna work that free We're loose enough where when we lower the tank, we'll be able to pop that hose off. And use our trim tool right above the differential here. I'm gonna pop this connector up and off. And once we have this connector off here, I'm gonna press down on the spring clip on the backside and separate the harness. Now that we disconnected this connector, we're gonna follow it back and we want to separate this harness from this plate here. Now on the side of the charcoal canister, you're going to find two studs with two 10 millimeter nuts. We did spray them down with some rust penetrant. We want to go ahead and loosen and remove those nuts. Grab the charcoal canister and this here and just kind of move this out of the way a little bit, drop it down. I'm gonna remove the 10 millimeter nut inside here. And over here, we have the 10 millimeter nut holding the plastic shield in place. Got to loosen and remove this. We're going to go ahead and remove the last 10 millimeter nut. This is right near the gas tank strap. I'm going to slide this out of the way. Now at this point here, we're gonna go ahead and slowly lower the tank. While you're doing this here, periodically stop, check around the edges, look for any wiring harnesses or anything like that that might be caught up. We also wanna pay attention that on the back side of the tank, we still have the filler neck tube, the rubber hose that comes to the top of the tank, as well as one of the vent tubes that have to get fully disconnected. So we'll have to go there and take care of that. Let's go ahead and slowly lower this down. Now when lowering the tank, you want to watch for the gas tank straps on the back side as they will catch on the subframe in the back. So as you're lowering it, you just kind of wiggle the tank around and push those straps and maneuver those. Now viewing this from the passenger side rear wheel well, we can see we have a hose right here. This actually came disconnected from that rubber hose right here. So when we reinstall the tank, we'll have to make sure that this lines up. The other side of this hose goes to the charcoal canister. So I wanna make sure that we connect that when we reinstall the tank. Now this line right here goes over and connects to the top side of the gas tank. On the top of the tank, there's a green clip on that hose. We're going to go ahead and release that green clip and pop that hose off so we can go ahead and continue to lower the tank. It's pretty much a lock. Now on the bottom side of this block, this green connector, there's two little push tabs. There's one on each side. And what you want to do is push those in and then up at the same time. You might be able to use your finger. You might be able to use a pick or a pocket screwdriver. Sometimes these can be little buggers to get to. So you just got to have some patience working on this here. There we go. Now that we have that clip up, we should be able to just slide this off the top. Here we go. Pop that off like so. Let's continue to go ahead and lower the tank a little bit. Now while doing this, remember the straps on the back side of the tank. So as you're dropping this down, you want to pull the tank towards the front of the vehicle. We do have an electrical connector on the top here going to that line that we just disconnected. Disconnect that.
Before we clean off the top of the tank, we want to go ahead and seal up any open ports here. So I'm just going to take an old glove and I'm going to throw a little tie wrap on that. On the top of the fuel pump sending unit here, we have this open port. We're going to seal this one off as well. Clear off the top of the gas tank, we're going to use compressed air and we're going to use a mat just to try and keep the debris down from blowing everywhere. And once we have this cleared off, I'm going to go ahead and spray this with some rust penetrant to help loosen this up a little bit. Now, if your lock ring looks like it's in rough shape, you may consider sourcing a new one before reassembling this. Now, after we've cleaned this off here, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect our electrical connector, this little tab right here. I'm going to press in on that and lift up. Next, we want to go ahead and remove our lock ring. We're going to do that using a brass punch here. The reason why we're using brass punch and not a screwdriver or something like that, well, we're exposed to fuel vapors and we don't want to cause any issues with sparks here dealing with that. So brass will not cause that spark. Practice safety around fuel. Before we pop this up, just kind of clear off any debris that's sitting around that. We don't want any garbage to fall down inside the tank. Lift this up. Now focus on this little tab right here. There's the arrow on the tank itself. This large tab needs to be where that is located. You can go ahead and lift this up. And this is kind of stuck in here. I'm going to use a plastic trim tool. Go ahead and pop that up. Go ahead and lift this unit up. And there is a hose on the bottom side of it that has a red locking clip on it. On the bottom side, there's two tabs you're gonna pinch in and then push up on that clip. Lift up and then twist it sideways and you'll be able to wiggle that hose off of that. that out. Once you have that transfer unit out, remove the o-ring. You want to go ahead and clean up where the o-ring seal is. You want to make sure there's no debris in there. Go ahead and take the new o-ring, set that in a place. And install this here. Feed it in, press the red lock clip in, snap that down, and lower this down into place. Now installing this, make sure that this tab is facing the arrow. Go ahead and grab that lock ring. Line that up. Use your brass punch to secure that. Make sure that the connector port here is clear of any debris. Install your connector. You're gonna hear it and feel it snap into place. Now on the top here, we wanna go ahead and remove our fuel line. There is a little retainer clip right here. You're gonna reach on the backside and just gently spread out the locking tabs and push out. There it is. Then we can go ahead and twist this up and off. Now to get this out of the way, we're just gonna go ahead and slide this down out of this clip. We're gonna remove our little tie here that we use to keep vapors from coming out while we worked on this. Using our brass punch, we're gonna go ahead and loosen and remove the lock ring here. We wanna make sure that the debris is pretty much gone. So that's clear there. I'm just gonna use this here and pop this lock ring off. Now we did previously spray this down with some rust penetrant to clear that up and loosen that. 
We don't want any garbage to fall down inside the tank, so we want to make sure that it's clear as possible. I want to go ahead and gently tug on this, and that'll pop up. Now, the next thing we have to pay attention to is attached to this here is a connector and a transfer hose that goes underneath and over the saddle portion of the tank here to the transfer unit on the passenger side of the tank. So we do have to go ahead and try and disconnect that. Now I'm gonna use a plastic trim tool here. On the side of this hose coming up on the bottom, there's a little push tab on the side that I have to press in and then pull it off of the bottom tube here. And I'll show you that a little bit better once we get this released. All right, it is now separated. I'm gonna tuck that off to the side. Now we do have a catch can here. The, this module here is filled with gasoline. So be prepared to capture this. And on the bottom side here, we also have another connector. So I'm going to just kind of twist this out to get the float out. And here is this red locking unit right here. There's a little leg on each side and pretty much we have to grab those underneath. There's a leg on each side. You can actually push in on either side and then upward. That'll pop up and then simply wiggle this off. put that into the catch can. Go ahead and remove the O-ring here and discard that. I want to go ahead and wipe out this groove here. Make sure there's no debris in here. Go ahead and take your new O-ring, set that into place. There is a trick to this here. I'm gonna grab this here and we're gonna take a wire tie. And this we're gonna use as a pull strap. I'm just using a pair of locking pliers here just to hold that strap up and out of the way. Now I'll show you how we remove this here. Right here is that little push clip. So you're gonna push in on that. I had used the plastic trim tool to push on that and then pull the sending unit up and it disconnected. So when we're using this strap here, we're simply going to pull us up because you won't be able to get your hand down inside to get to it. Pull up on that, get it in place, put your fingers underneath and pull it up. You're gonna feel it snap into place and then we'll go ahead and cut that wire tie with some cutters and then we'll finish inserting the rest of the unit. Take our new unit and you wanna be sure to remove all of the rubber caps. Push it on, press that lock tab down, just give it a little tug. That'll be locked into place. Put that in. We're gonna tuck everything down inside. Pull this over. And we should be able to just push this up and on. There it is, you're gonna be able to hear that snap into place. Then reach in there with your cutters. Pull up the whole thing. Now this tab right here fits into a notch and there's an actual an arrow on the tank itself pointing inward. That tells you that that arrow should line up with this tab. Press that down into place. Go ahead and get that lock ring started. Using your brass punch, go ahead and anchor that lock ring. With that secured, go ahead and push that fuel line over. Remove the cap, press the fuel line down, install the locking clip. Grab your electrical connector, Line that up. 
press that on, you're gonna hear it and feel it snap into place. Now we're gonna go ahead and raise our tank up into place. You wanna pay attention to all the connectors and hoses that we're gonna have to install as we put this up into place. We have the two tubes on the back side, on the driver's side for the filler neck and the vapor tube. We also have a connector right above the rear differential as well as this fuel vapor hose here that needs to get connected. Don't forget our tank straps that we are gonna to have to maneuver up and over that rear subframe area. Once you get the tank up to a certain point and our gas tank straps are beyond the sway bar lengths, we can go ahead and start to pull the tank further back. And that's what we're gonna do is we get this further higher up, we can slowly start to move it backward as well. Periodically look around, make sure you're not getting any connectors or anything caught. Now we put a rubber glove over the fuel line coming from the engine area and we just put a little wire tie on this here to try and keep vapors from leaking out. So we're just gonna snip off our wire tie And we just put on a couple gloves here. Now this does have some fuel in it. Just be careful if that's what you do, chose to do. Now our tank needs to come further back and you wanna pay attention to our straps. There's one on the driver's side, one on the passenger side. And you can see that right now it's hitting the subframe. You wanna go ahead and grab that tank and raise it up both sides and kind of work it back. Just pull it back so those straps are closer to the top of that subframe, kind of working this back into place. Now with the tank tilted up, we're going to go ahead and you want to install your filler neck here as well as the vacuum tube or the vent tube right behind it. So you just kind of, you have to reach in between the body and the subframe here and reach in to connect those. Now I'm going to reach up between the drive shaft and the side of the tank here put my arm up over the tank and reach over and grab this tube here. Now with the other hand, I'm gonna use a pair of pliers and I wanna grab that tube and I wanna hold that so I can go ahead and get this connected. Now on the top here, we're gonna go ahead and pull off this cap. And I'll go ahead and line this up. Once we have that in place, push that on. I want to make sure it's fully seated before we press down the lock clip. Here it is. Press that down to lock it on. Install this electrical connector. You're going to feel it in here. It snap into place. Now at this point, we can go ahead and raise our tank up into position. Just do a quick once over around, making sure there's nothing bound up. Now at this point, we can go ahead and and get our front bolts lined up and get those started. And once you have the front bolt started, you wanna go ahead and get the rear bolt started. Don't tighten them down yet, but you wanna get all four of these bolts for the straps at least in halfway. Let's go ahead and line up your charcoal canister. And get the upper nut started here. And get this here to line up. Get this nut started. There we go. Let's go ahead and install the three on the outside of the unit. Go ahead and line this up. I'm going to install the two nuts here. And let's get our fifth and final one on the outer edge here. Now, once you have those all started, we're going to go back and snug them down. Now, with those secured, 
go ahead and install your ports and fuel lines. Once you have that lined up, push the locking clip on. Connect your electrical connector here. And install our upper hose here. Connect our fuel line and pop our little cap off. Line this up and just push it together. You're gonna feel it in here, it snapped together. Install your lower vapor port and press the green lock tab down, snapping that into place. Above the rear differential, you wanna grab this connector, line this up, and put that together. And insert the bracket into the tank itself. One more little retainer here for the harness. Work that in. Then we're gonna use our six millimeter socket and extension. Let's go ahead and tighten down that fuel filler neck hose. And you do wanna make sure this is good and snug. Now at this point here, we have our pry bar on our strap, just cause our strap had bent a little bit when we were putting that up into place. We're gonna go ahead and use our pry bar to maneuver our strap over in place. Get that lined up and start to thread that bolt in. And once you've gotten that bolt far enough up where you have some clearance, you can then use an extension with a swivel socket to go ahead and access that bolt from down underneath. And at this point here, we're gonna go ahead and repeat the same process for the passenger side. I'm gonna use our pole jack here. Go ahead and start to raise our dryer shaft bucket back up in a position. And you might have to just kind of maneuver your bracket around a little bit here to get this to line up. Go ahead and get your bolt started. Make sure those are good and tight. Now before installing our drive shaft up into the carrier unit, on the back end here, there is a cover that secures some grease on the inside here, which is very important. Now there's also a gasket that runs along here and it's actually formed, you can actually move it with your finger. And this seal keeps the grease inside. Now the important thing here is when you're putting your bolts through, they have to fit through the notches in the gasket all the way around. If this gasket is moved or this cap should turn, well the bolts aren't gonna go through, they're just gonna hit that cap and not go in to the coupler on the backside of that differential. So very important when you're doing this. Ideally, go ahead and install these here, and then you can go ahead and line up the cover, get that into place. Now I'm just gonna push these studs back just a little bit, and the same here, and at this point we know that the cover and our gasket is lined up, and let's feed this up into place. Now what we're doing is lining up our yellow crayon mark that we had earlier. And let's go ahead and get our bolt started. What we're gonna do is we're going to crisscross pattern, snugging these down until this is fully seated. And then we'll come back and torque those down later. And once we have all those snug down, we want to go ahead and torque these down to 18 foot-pounds.
All right, so we're gonna go ahead and raise up our exhaust in a position here. And uh, we're gonna put that into the front pipe right there. And once we line that up, we're just gonna twist this into place. I wanna make sure that that pipe gets in. And then put our pole jack in the middle here. Raise this up. Right there. And now we can go ahead and put the rubber hanger onto that exhaust. Exhaust will be easier to install using two people. Right, just get that into place. I'm gonna tap down our flared edges from when we removed it. exhaust stand here or our pole jack set that aside and we do is spray a little bit of solvent on that rubber and that'll kind of let that slide in a little bit easier we get this done on the driver side repeat for the passenger side go ahead and install that wheel We'll go ahead and start all of our lug nuts by hand. Once we get all of these started by hand, we'll then follow up by snugging them down. Torque the wheel to 100 foot-pounds. fuse in place and press that down, make sure it's fully seated, and then close the lid. Grab the ground terminal, line that up, work that down, make sure it's at least flush with the top of that post, and snug it down. Make sure that's snug, give that terminal a wiggle, at that point there, you're all set. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.